will be of something where we divide uh, the, the real line into intervals by our critical points. In this place, the only critical point was x equals 0. So I'm going to have two intervals. I'm going to have one from negative infinity to 0. And I'll have another one from 0 to infinity. And if you're looking at the process outlined on the paper under the sign chart process, this would be step two. Divide the real number line into intervals by the points from step one. So my f prime of x was negative 14 x over x squared plus 2 squared, right? I need one test point from each. So this is step three. I'm going to pick test points. So from negative infinity to zero, what would you like for me to test that is between negative infinity and zero? X equal negative one. Okay, that'll work. What about zero to infinity? Test x equals one. So that's step three. We take our test points. Step four is we take our test points and we plug them into the derivative. Prime of negative one is negative 14 of negative one over negative one quantity squared plus two. I don't have to evaluate this. I just have to determine whether this is positive or negative. Is the numerator going to be positive or negative? Yeah, so this is a positive because it's two multiplied, two negatives times each other. What about the bottom? Can you tell if that will be positive or negative? Yeah, so this is getting squared. And this whole thing is getting squared. Anything squared can't be negative. This is getting squared, which makes it positive. And then even if that works, like we have so much protection. So this is positive over positive. So f prime of negative one is a positive. And I don't have to actually multiply anything to see that. Does that make sense? And then f prime of negative of positive one is the same kind of reasoning. Negative 14 times one over negative one squared plus two squared is equal to a negative number because it's negative times positive over a positive number. And the ratio of those things would be negative. So you don't actually have to evaluate in this step. You just have to get to a place where you can say that f prime of negative 1 is positive and f prime of 1 is negative. So now we can kind of turn step 2 into step 5 because we know we can look at f prime of x and we can say, well, f prime of x is positive on this interval negative on this interval because I use these test points that were from these intervals. And so f of x is increasing on this interval and decreasing on this interval. 